Hello Guardians, it is Ebontis here, and we've got a new event coming up. We've got the Festival of the Lost. So this is the Halloween event for Destiny. If you haven't been around before, uh, this is kind of what they do for Halloween. We've been doing it for a few years now. Has had some ups and downs with the Eververse and things like that. They kind of fixed it last year, so all in all, most things were earnable. And generally, it was just kind of a fun event. Halloween-themed tower and stuff like that, so we'll cover all the pieces to it. There are some tips they point out in this. There are some rewards that you can earn. So I want to go through and cover all the pieces of what you guys can expect with Festival Lost so you know what's coming. Other people may have covered it. I just don't want to let all of you guys know that follow me what's going on coming up next week. So Festival Lost begins October 29th and it runs through November 19th. So it's going to go for three weeks as most events do. Tuesday through three weeks later on Tuesday. So three full weeks of Festival of the Lost and Ava Levante will be returning. She's going to be the one handling the festival events. First thing that you guys are going to see probably when you log in next Tuesday is going to be the tower has been redecorated. Somehow they transported a kind of terrifying tree in the middle of it. Uh, we've got our purple candles around the tower. We've got our little pumpkins and jack-o'-lanterns and all those things in there. So the tower decorations are pretty cool. And that's where we're going to begin. So we're going to go to Ava Levante to begin our journey. We're going to acquire our Masquerader helmet to participate. So what you're going to be able to do with that helmet is earn chocolate strange coins from bounties and activities to purchase Festival Lost mask ornaments for your helmet. So it's a basic helmet and then you'll put ornaments on that so you can actually look different and kind of go terrorize people with your mask. Nice thing is, everyone's going to be able to participate. All you have to do is be 770 light level, and this is for new players. So anyone who plays Destiny 2, even if you're playing it for free, you can participate in this thing. You just have to be 770 power level, which if you run a few activities in the game, you'll probably trip your way up there in no time. It's a pretty cool event, though. Some certain things you aren't going to want to miss, so let's talk about those. Uh, the masks that you can earn for your Masquerader's helmet are shown here. So we've got Drifter and Eris. We've got Mithrax. Uh, and he's from the mission for Outbreak Prime or Outbreak Perfected. I never remember which name it's called. Uh, we've got an Acolyte. You've got a Goblin and also Callus here as well. So six different masks that you'll be able to put on. I think there's a Triumph even for those. We'll cover the Triumphs towards the end. But these are the different masks that you'll be able to basically wear over the top of your Masquerader's helmet. So you can look like this kind of in goofy ways or screenshots and things like that. Have a little fun with your outlook. Kind of look different, which should be fun. Outside of cosmetics and your Masquerader's Helmet, which is going to probably have some mods and abilities that it's going to do, we also have a new weapon. So, the Braytech Werewolf Legendary Auto Rifle. So, we're getting a new auto rifle. This one is probably going to be, I'm guessing, a reskin of the one from Mars, because that's where all the Braytech stuff is at. But we've got a auto rifle. Pretty cool skin on it, honestly. You've got the kind of skeleton type aesthetics, but it's like the skeleton of a gun. Because you have the barrel, you have the scope, you have the stock, the magazine, you can see the bullet squished up in the magazine, the rail underneath it, you've got all the pieces to it, and it's just kind of shown with that really light blue underneath the black, so it's like it's painted the skeleton on the outside so you can see what's going on the inside of the gun. Pretty cool looking. Nice thing about this weapon is that it is going to be a fully masterworked 950 power weapon. Doesn't matter if you're 770 power, 802, 901, 925, or 950. You're going to get this weapon at 950, so it is my advice to make sure you participate in this event. It's really important, especially if you're leveling up, to raise that average of all your gear, and a 950 auto rifle is definitely going to be a good thing to bump you up. So if you're getting close, if you're like just not getting the powerful gear runs as quickly as you might like, make sure you participate in Festival Lost, do what you need to do, and I'll tell you guys next week what it takes. Uh, to get your 950 power weapon. So stay tuned. I'll let you guys know what it takes to get that. Usually it's not that crazy. It just probably takes like, you know, five, six, seven, eight, nine runs in the infinite forest, which is like 15 minutes. So it's like running eight or nine strikes and you get a 950 weapon. Guaranteed, usually pretty cool. It's probably something like that. It's been similar before. We'll see what the requirements are in um, Tuesday next week. So the haunted forest is what they do with the previous years. And what they're going to allow you to do is go into the Infinite Forest. They've kind of remapped it a little bit. So it's mostly dark. The light that you're mostly going to see has come from your ghost, actually, that you guys can see here in this picture. Uh, we've got trees, and it's kind of darkened out. There can be pretty much any race that I've seen in there previously. They're mostly there. And then sometimes they have big, um, like, champion knights that are going to come in there with big axes that you're going to use. They've probably got some twist for us, for sure. And they even describe it to say you'll have 15 minutes to make it as far as you can go which I'm sure people like Glad and Chevy and Sweatsicle and the crazy ones are going to get really far to see just to see how far it goes. But beware, what awaits you at the end? Now, last year there was a nice cute surprise, definitely something to freak out people who ran for it 
through it for the first time. So just a little moment, and then we kind of figured out how to handle it. But it was still funny the first time. So I'm not going to say what it you what it was last year. I'm sure it will be something different just to keep us on our toes. Um, but it is pretty funny. Just Bungie always trolling us just a little bit to have some fun. Just watch out in the end when you get towards whether the boss or when you're almost done. All I can say is just watch out. We'll see what happens. But Haunted Forest will be running through. And again, likely what it's going to take is bounties and things like that to either get a certain number of kills or getting a certain number of bosses killed or make it through a certain number of sections from the Haunted Forest. Whatever it is, that's probably what it's going to take to get the auto rifle. Some bounty like that is probably going to be what it takes. So spending a little bit of time in there, a couple hours is probably what to expect. So next we come to the Eververse stuff for the Halloween event. Some of it's actually pretty cool, so I'm going to go through what we got. Previous years, the like I think it was the first year they ran uh, Festival of the Lost, they had some issues. They called it Festival of the Cost. Now, I think Bungie has learned from there. Last season, it was handled fairly well, so I'm really not that concerned about it. But generally, I would say on this stuff, some of it may be for silver. You might be buying it. Some of it may be bright dust. That's really just kind of like we're going to have to see how it goes. I don't honestly know until we get there. But, as you guys can see on screen, some of the stuff looks pretty cool. So here you can actually see the skeleton armor ornaments. Now these actually look pretty sick, I'll be honest. So I don't know if there's three different ones, if it's a full set, one for each piece, if you'll be able to put the ornaments on there. But all in all, these actually look really, really cool. I like them just because it's a way for you to look kind of interesting. From what I can tell, it looks like you've got a callus mask, you've got probably a gall mask, and I cannot tell what the other one is in teal. If somebody knows, let me know in the comments below. I just can't tell what the hunter is wearing. But again, you've got basically skeletons as ornaments, kind of that black and bright alt, uh, contrasting colors. Look really cool. And these are just going to be armor ornaments as most Eververse things are. So it's really up to you. Again, fully cosmetic. It's your option to buy them. I really don't know why fits are thrown over the Eververse. It's completely optional. It's, it's all a look. It doesn't change gameplay. But if you want to look cool, maybe you'll be spending money. It's totally up to you how you spend it. The other things we've got are going to be emotes, ships, shaders, ghost shells, all that type of stuff you guys can see here. So we do have two sparrows at the top that you guys can see. The broomstick is just awesome. It's just kind of cool. Harry Potter-esque for sure. Uh, and then on the right, we've got what looks to be, I can't tell if it's like a coffin with a big skull on the front, but that is a big beefy boy sparrow. That one is quite interesting. In the middle, we've got the bat shader. Bat Skeleton Shader, which is kind of awesome, actually. You can actually have your own Batmobile or Batplane, whatever it would be called. Bottom left, you guys can see there's an emote. So that's actually towards the end of the emotes. You can actually see that you've got a Tombstone that you can plant on somebody. This thing is going to be trolling people in PvP everywhere. I can see it coming already. On the right, we got a few ghosts. You've got the Bat Ghost, which is really hilarious. It looks like a paper craft ghost. Uh, you've got the pumpkin, and then we've also got, just looks kind of a triangle ghost, and then it looks like the jack-o'-lantern is actually probably an ornament you can put on your head, so you could run around as a jack-o'-lantern, potentially, I don't know if it's going to be forever, but you could be a jack-o'-lantern or Omnigal for quite some time, so those are pretty cool cosmetics, again, it's all in how you want to look, if you want to spend the money, it's completely up to you, some of it I might buy just because, hey, it looks freaking awesome, so that's my choice. Couple more details that we do have when it comes to the Haunted Forest. Uh, it is going to be kind of darkened out, and what we're going to do is basically have two options Haunted Forest or Firewalled Haunted Forest. Firewalled is going to be if you want to go solo or specifically without matchmaking, but there is a match made version for sure. Um, 750 power level required to get in there, but you have to have 770 to start the whole um, basically escape the Cosmodrome to unlock the tower. You have to be 770 power, and those are the only two things that you've got to do. But you're going to have your two playlists that you're going to be activate either from the director or in the tower either way to kick it off. Your rewards are going to be the candy and chocolate strange coins. So we've had strange coins previously in Dusty 1. They were related to Zer. Now we're just getting chocolate versions of those. It's kind of a tease, but those are going to be related to the masks that we were able to buy. Uh, for the bounties that we're going to have, we're going to have two weekly bounties, four daily bounties, and then, of course, the additional repeatable bounties. Those are always nice and greatly appreciated. I think repeatable bounties are one of the best things they put in the game, so cannot wait to be able to at least grind it out for something. Because if you did your weeklies and your dailies and you're like, I still want to play, there wasn't anything to do. So the additional bounties are a great addition. I'm glad those are in there for sure. Uh, the masks that you're going to be able to get, the... Hidden Swarm, the Goblin, Mithrax, the Callus, Drifter, and then Eris seems to be one. I don't know why it was shown previously, but it's not shown here. Obviously, you've got your Braytech rewards. You've got an epic mystery grab bag. I'm not entirely sure how you get that. It's probably just going to be some, like, collection of currencies we get from the event that we're going to be able to use. 
Now, the Masquerader's Helmet is going to have different ornaments. That's what you're going to look like, all those different characters you want to. But the helmet itself is also going to be able to equip certain mods. Now, the mods are only active during Festival of Lost while in the Haunted Forest. It's the only place they're going to be used. So I'm not going to go breaking Competitive Crucible or anything like that. So don't worry. So I've got three mods. We've got Higher Purpose, Significant Damage Resistance While Airborne, Significantly increased damage to all enemies, increase the drop chance of heavy ammo on kill. Now, the way this previously worked with the masks is you would like unlock tiers. So, if you choose one of your masks to be higher purpose, then that one is going to be running that tier. More damage while airborne, more damage to all enemies, and increased chance, uh, drop chance of heavy ammo on kill. So, that would be your higher purpose path. Then we've got Vampiric Touch, significantly increased damage to challenging enemies. Seems like a valuable one there. Precision kills trigger health regeneration. So far sounding pretty good. And increases uh, the drop chance of heavy ammo. Again, all three of them seem to do that. Energetic Assassin is the last one. Precision kills grant grenade and melee energy. So, again, getting that energy back, throwing grenades more frequently. Definitely be precise. Hand cannons, things like that are going to be good. Significantly increase damage to terrors. Now, terrors are going to be... Probably what are like the bosses or the big heavy knights or what we're probably looking at right now, mostly like nightmares. Those are going to be the big things that are harder to kill. So getting grenade and melee energy and then also damage to terrors is going to be crucial. Um, and you're going to have different masks that you can maybe interchange. I doubt we're going to be lock and load out. So I'm not sure how that's going to work for if the ornaments are what we equip the mods to or if we get like multiple helms so we can choose which style we want to run with. Just have to see when we get there. But big thing about the mods is... Um, as you can say below, it actually gives a little tip, so I'll read it to you guys, even though you're looking at the thing on screen. Uh, the Festival of the Lost Mods indicate that their perks must be unlocked of it by defeating terrors in the Haunted Forest. This is not true. Perk upgrades for Festival of the Lost Mods will activate as soon as their mod is equipped. Players are in the Haunted Forest activity. So, apparently the tool tip on the mods themselves is kind of off, so just make note, don't worry about it, should be good to go. Final thing, we've got the Triumphs for Festival Lost. Again, it's going to be under Seasonal Events tab. You've got Day of the Dead, Complete Festival Lost, all of the Triumphs. You've got a Frightening Power, Acquire the Exclusive Festival Lost 2019 Weapon. Strange Times, Collect Strange Chocolate Strange Coins, probably a certain number you have to collect. Bountiful, Complete Festival of the Lost Bounties. A Brilliant Smile, Brush Your Teeth, or your Mastication, mastication Module. Um... So, I'm not entirely sure what brush your teeth is. It's probably going to be some little thing that we have to do. I'm sure it'll clarify later. That's weird. Still not scared. Defeat terrors in the Haunted Forest. It's just going to be part of running in there. It's whether the bosses or mini-bosses, whatever it is. Terrors are going to be running around. Shoot them. Kill them. It's going to be part of it. Master of Disguise. Acquire all the masks. Sweet Tooth. Collect candy a certain amount. Sweet Surprise. Purchase Festival of the Lost. Grab bags from Eva Levante. Now, that's not when you're going to have to buy for money. It's probably going to be something that you're going to have to buy for a certain number of strange coins. And then a redacted one. Not sure what the redacted one is. Maybe you have to hit a certain number of waves or get so far into it. That's something like that before. Um, Festival of Lost Triumphs. When they have been unlocked, make sure you claim them. They state when Festival of Lost ends on November 19th, anything that has not actually been claimed, like unlocked but not actually clicked on, make it will go away. So make sure to get credit that you click on those Triumphs. That is crucial. Other than that, that pretty much covers it for Festival Lost. We should have a pretty fun event going on. Um, definitely some cool cosmetics in here. I mean, Halloween's always got some fun stuff for trolling people with a tombstone. You can have skeleton bones for ornaments and lots of fun stuff like that. So, that is Festival Lost in a nutshell for you guys. Thank you all very much for tuning in. Just wanted to cover everything we have to expect with this event. And hopefully this guides you in reasons what to do, what to expect what you're looking forward to, and kind of what you want to earn. So thank you guys for tuning in. You can find me on Twitch and Twitter. It's Imantas on both, but right here on YouTube. Thank you guys for everything. Have a great one. I'll see you soon.